Hey, Phil Steele here. Today I'm going to show you how to create animated versions of your still photos using a new software called Plotograph. What we're looking at here are some online galleries on my website of Plotographs that I've created. And I gotta admit, I'm kind of obsessed with this lately. Once you start making these, it becomes very addictive and you start going through your past catalog of photos trying to find better and better ones to animate. This is seriously keeping me awake at night. You can see I've created a couple of folders over here at the left of my site to display these. I only put a few in each folder because the file size is larger than a typical photo, of course, because it has multiple frames, and I want to keep them loading relatively fast. I'm not going to click on the third folder because there's a nude in there, and I don't want to get you in trouble if someone's looking over your shoulder. But I'll put a link below this video directly to all of these galleries so you can go and look at them for yourself online. And also, below this video, I'll put a link where you can get the Plotograph software for a discounted price. As always, I went to bat for you, and I really twisted their arms over there to get a special deal for my audience. So take advantage of that now. If you want to try this, use the link below the video. Now, before I start showing you examples of how I create these in Plotograph, I'll tell you why I'm excited about this. Now that basically everyone is a photographer, it's getting harder and harder to make your photos stand out from the crowd, and these can really set you apart. If you put one of these on your website, people are going to stop and notice. Or if you want to win the photo of the day contest somewhere, this instantly puts you in a league of your own. This is cutting edge right now. Now I can think of all kinds of ways you could use these. Naturally, if you have a photography business, you could use this to really set yourself apart and to attract clients. In fact, this software was created by a fashion photographer named Troy Christopher Plota, and he's using it to make his photos different from all the other photographers out there. I mean, take a look at the homepage of his website here. He took an underwater photo and then he animated it with Plotograph. I think this is amazing, and it's different from what everyone else is doing, so he really stands out. But even if you're not a professional photographer, imagine having one of these photos on your business website to draw people in or showing your product in motion. Or imagine just creating one of these for an organization that you belong to. What if you took a picture of your church and you animated the clouds moving above it and put that on the homepage of your church's website? Or if you just like to blow people's minds like I do, then you could send these to friends or add them to galleries or share them on Facebook or Instagram so that people will be saying, how the heck did you do that? All right, now let's take a look at how you make these. Now my goal here is not to give you a thorough tutorial because they have a whole YouTube channel full of tutorials showing all the details of all the things you can do with the software. I'm just gonna give you an overview and walk you through creating a simple one just to show you how easy it can be. It's surprisingly easy. You'll be amazed at how easy it can be. Now, let me preface this by saying I am not a Plotograph expert by any means. I have literally just started using this and I'm almost as clueless as you are. All I did was spend about 15 minutes looking at their free YouTube tutorials. They have dozens of them. And I looked at a couple of the introductory ones and just barely got to the point where I could make things move. And then I stopped and I just started playing. So I'm a real novice at this, but I can show you how easy it is to get started with these. So I've opened up a photo in Plotograph that I want to animate. Now the most fundamental idea when you start making one of these is that you're going to select an area that moves and in an area that's frozen. And the frozen area is what they call masked. And it's just like creating a mask in Photoshop. You mask the part that you don't want to move and then you indicate the part that you do want to move and tell it how to animate. So one thing that's nice is they have this automated masking tool right here. When I click on that, this will actually help you create a mask and sometimes it'll do a perfect job of it. Sometimes you have to help it out with a brush. But I'm gonna select area to mask and I'm just gonna draw a sloppy line on the thing that I don't want to move in the photo, which is these rocks. And I'm just gonna let it start figuring this out. Now I'm going to select that again and I'm gonna say area to animate. So now I'm gonna draw a sloppy line on the part that I'm going to make move. And it will do that and I'm gonna draw one in here. And look at that, it did the masking for me. I don't even have to retouch anything on here. Now, if it hadn't masked it correctly, I'd be able to manually do it with a brush, just like you can do in Photoshop. So let's say it had missed a part, and I went to the mask brush and said, I'm going to mask something. Let's say there was a piece of rock here. I could manually paint that, or I could go to the mask brush and say, erase, and I could, in fact, now I have to erase it because I messed it up. So let me go in there and I'm just gonna erase 
what I did there. I made a mess. And there we go, I erased my mess. It doesn't have to be perfect, the edges are not super crucial. But what you do need to do after you create your mask is do what they call feathering the edges. And that feather symbol right here is where we do that. So you click on the feathering thing, and when you... <laughs> I don't understand their, their graphic for the feathering, that thing's pretty crazy looking. But you want to click where, when it has background selected, you want to kind of drag this thing up. And you can see how it's making that blue line thicker in the drawing, or in the photo. That blue line is how much feathering there is on the edge, where it sort of blends together the edge where the rock meets the, meets the clouds. So you want to go partway up on that. I go up maybe to the middle or so, and then I switch over to the one that says foreground, and I just drag that one a little bit up usually, and you kind of get a view as you're doing it of what, what it's doing, but I can't really see what it's doing. I don't really understand the visuals of their feathering tool. I'm just kind of following the instructions that one of their tutorials had. It said drag this one most of the way up, drag this one a little way up. And it seems to work pretty well. All right, so we feathered the edge. Now the animation part happens. And this is surprisingly easy. All you do, this is the thing that says animation points. I click on that. I'm gonna click add points. And then what I'm going to do to animate certain areas is I'm just going to click and drag in the direction I want things to move and add a little animation uh, sort of vector. So I'm going to click here and drag this way and release. You can see it made a little line going from an orange point to a blue point. And that's the direction of movement, the direction that I dragged. And then I'm just going to add a few more saying I want these clouds to be moving this way and this way and this way. And inside here, I'm going to add a couple. Let's see, maybe I'll add one here, and add one here, and add one here. So that may be all that's needed. You don't know until you click the play button and see what it does, and then sometimes you make adjustments. But I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click the animate button here. Now, when it animates, it shows you sort of a lower frame rate version. It only animates it at six frames per second. Oh, now look at that. That looks pretty good, but there's one weird little thing here where the edge, I probably didn't, I probably didn't uh, mask that part correctly, but I'll show you a little trick. If you get something where it's pulling off a piece of the rock, everything else looks pretty good, I think, except for that one little error. So I'll show you a trick. If something's getting pulled off that you don't want to move, you can put a point there. I'm gonna go to add points, and I'm just gonna click right at that edge, and I'm just gonna put a still point. It's just a little orange dot. I didn't drag, so it's not a it's not a moving point. It's what they call an anchor point. I just clicked one there that says hold this spot still. Now let me try it again. Oh, I see I didn't I didn't put it in quite the right place maybe. I've still got it pulling off a little chunk of that edge there. So I'm gonna go back. Maybe this time I'll try doing something different. I'll change the mask. So I'm gonna pause it. And that whole area seems to have a little trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the mask brush and I'm going to, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, use the same command you do in Photoshop. And I'm just going to make my mask go a little farther there so it's like not trying to pull that piece of rock off there. Let's see if maybe that does it. I put it out into the clouds a little bit. We'll see what happens with that. So click and wait. Well, that seemed to have solved it. Uh, it looks perfect now. And you know, to, to be honest, the first time I did this, I didn't have those little complications. The first time I did it, I just drew the mask, auto mask area, and it got it perfect on the first try. But I'm kind of glad it had some little glitches so I could show you how you can sort of tweak it and fine tune it. And there's lots more you can do, of course, lots, lots more. This is like the simplest example, but it's that easy. And once you do a few of these, Literally, it takes me four or five minutes to do almost all of them. Once you get a little bit of skill at it, you can just crank them out, just uh, a few minutes each. Now, there's some other controls here, the animation properties, and if you open that up, you have various things you can change, like the mode. The mode can be infinity or blend or end-to-end -end or circular, which all do very different kinds of effects, and you can play with those, and you can use a different animation mode. You can change how many frames per second it previews at. And this one's kind of important. How many seconds does it take to do its loop, basically? 
And if you change this, it makes it go faster or slower. So I'll show you, if I change that to one second instead of two, it'll make the clouds go faster. And then it looks like they're a little crazy moving too fast to me there. So I'm gonna go, I'll change that, uh, change it to three instead, and you'll see that they, uh, they go slower. Yeah, so that's a little more, more calm and reasonable. So what do you do with it? Once you've animated it like this and you like the look of it, how do you get it out of here and how do you share it? You go to the file menu here and you click on it and you pick export as. And you basically have two choices. You can export it as an MP4, which is a little movie file. And if you want to put it on Instagram, that's the format you would use. Otherwise, you change that. Usually what I do is make a GIF out of it. And a GIF is something you can put in a web page, like all those photos that you saw in my web gallery online, those are animated GIFs. And you can choose the, the output size. And a good rule of thumb, if you're going to put it in a web page or something, you probably want to keep the file size at maybe 1200 or lower. Like if you're going to go on Facebook or put these in a gallery or put them in a web page, I usually go down to maybe, you know, 600, 700 pixels on the longest dimension because the file size will get very big if you, if you output them very large. So I go down in that range if I'm going to use them on the web. And you can also reduce the file size by changing the frame rate here. By default, it's here at 25 frames per second. I usually output mine at 15 or sometimes even at 12 if I'm trying to get the frame rate down. Then after you export, you go to the area called My Exports, and you can see all the ones I've been doing because I've been going crazy with this thing. And it sits here and thinks about it for a moment. And once it finishes generating it, you can just click on Download, and you can save it to your computer. Or you can click on the Get Link option, and it'll give you a link that you could just send to someone. And it would just open it up right in their web browser if you wanted to do it that way. So there you go. I think you get the idea that these can be very easy to create. And as I mentioned, if you want to try it, now is the time because the discount that I got for you from Plotograph is only for a short time. They're taking a risk with me by giving my audience that price. So take advantage of it. Use the link below the video to get the discount. And if you do try it, send me a link to your photos. I'd love to see what you do with it. All right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoy this crazy software as much as I am, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.